If you've been using Notion for less than three months and still feel overwhelmed with the app, I made this video for you. I have been working in Notion for almost two years and my whole business depends on it. And also I've been teaching Notion for a little bit over a year now. And this has allowed me to see which are the common mistakes that we all make when we start using Notion. So I wanted to make this video to either prevent you from making those mistakes or at least just relieve you that, yeah, we all make the same. So let's get into the seven mistakes that I've been identifying over time. The first one is that a template is not a system. Sorry for telling this upfront because probably you've already downloaded some templates, but this is the truth. When we start with Notion, we're overwhelmed and we try to create our systems as soon as possible. And we think that just by downloading some templates from the internet or from guys like me, that you will have a fully structured system. So you start to download templates, lots of them, but since every template doesn't exactly fit your needs, they end up just gathering dust on your sidebar. And as a result, your workspace becomes a mess of unused templates. So my advice here will be a mindset, which is that templates are just a starting point towards building a real system. Because after downloading one or buying one, you will have to accommodate them to the way that you work. In fact, most of my clients come to me after downloading some templates and figuring out that those were not very helpful for them. And when we start working, the first thing that I see when they do the screen share is all the amount of templates that they have in the sidebar. In fact, if you wanna dive a little bit deeper on how to better use templates, I made a video just about this that you can check over here. The second biggest mistake is to fix everything with creating new properties. Because yes, it is very easy to just fix all the problems that we encounter by creating new properties and new filters. Okay, do we need to distinguish between what is a task and what is an event within a database? Let's create a new property for that, a checkbox, and then create a view to distinguish both. But what is going to happen is that after a couple of months, you won't remember how you built what you built and the filters and everything and any minimum modification will mess up your system because you will have to have in your brain a lot of different things that you build. So simplicity is king. And I love this example that I once heard that it's one manager said to his employee, simplify, simplify. And the employee said, just one simplify would have sufficed. So this also applies to properties in Notion. Try to have the least amount possible. If you have a problem and the first solution that comes to mind is to create a new property for that, think twice because maybe some of the properties that you have already in your system can serve for the same purpose. Because also more properties equals more maintenance work in the long run. So more things to take care of in your system. But here there is a caveat. If the properties that we create are automated, such as rollups or formulas, then it doesn't really matter that much because they are not really going to take much of our time to maintain. Now, the third mistake that I've been seeing is that people normally tend to don't create workflows. So if you find that you do certain sequences of actions multiple times, you better create a Notion workflow to help you go through it. The way workflows are created in Notion is by using database templates or template buttons in which we are going to order those steps vertically and chronologically. So one example of a workflow like this is going to be a weekly review where we always do the same process every week, which in my case is first, I'm gonna take a look of what I did the past week so I can review it. And later I'm gonna go ahead and schedule my upcoming week. Another example of workflows is what I call input pages. This is to standardize the input of data to our databases. Like this, we won't forget to enter any metadata that is needed for our system to run. So, and this will be super simple, just one page with one link database showing the properties that we always need to fill. So remember, always create guided processes so you don't have to trust your brain to remember. The fourth mistake is becoming too much of a Notion fanboy. Okay, if we are here and if you are watching this video right now, this means that you like Notion, right? We think it's the best and that we can do everything with it. And we are partly true, Notion is quite good. But in the end, our main goal is to become more productive, to do more with less effort and less time, right? So we cannot let our love for Notion blind us into actually becoming less productive. And what do I mean by this? If there is any other app that is going to do the job for something in particular better than Notion, 
maybe we have to use that other app. Because what is good about Notion is the interconnectability among all the different parts of the system. But if we find some other app that does a better job as something else, and that we don't require any connections between that part and the rest of our system, probably we have to use the other app. So for example, so it's more clear, Notion doesn't have any option to scan documents. And in order to visualize PDFs, it's a little bit pain in the ass because you will have to either open it in a browser or download the PDF. There is no option to watch the PDF within the app. So I would choose to use Evernote for this. Their document scan is amazing and I can open the PDFs from the app. And I don't need this, I don't need my documents to be linked to anything else in my system. So it can be a standalone system. Then the fifth mistake is not prioritizing aesthetics. <laughs> I remember back in the day when I was first using Notion, I didn't really pay attention to how my Notion looked. I just wanted it to work. I just wanted the databases linked, everything working, everything automated, and that is it. But it was super ugly. But think about it, the house we live in, probably you have spent a lot of time and a lot of money into making it look good, into making it look cozy so we feel good inside of it, right? And the reason for this is because we are going to spend a lot of time at home. So this is the same reason why you should also care about how your Notion looks, because potentially we are going to be using Notion a lot. And as I told you before, my whole business depends on it. So you can imagine the amount of hours per week that I spend in the app. So I better create a good cozy atmosphere with my colors, finding beautiful emojis on flaticon.com or even using Photoshop to create some colored lines so everything looks better. For me, this is all time that is very well invested. The sixth mistake is creating all-in-one dashboards. It is already very well known that a messy environment will really affect our focus. Basically, we get more distracted the more shit we have around. So the same way that our physical environment affects us, the same happens in our digital environment. I have seen a lot of people creating those mega dashboards with all the information, with your daily tasks, your weekly tasks, your monthly goals, the people you need to contact, your finances, your everything, everything is in there. Yes, they are very beautiful and normally those posts get a lot of likes, but I get overwhelmed so much by those kind of dashboards. So instead of what I opt to create is focused pages, this is how I call it. And those are pages that just provide information about one and only thing. If I want to know my habits score from my habit tracking, I'm just going to create one page for checking the habit score. If I want to know what I need to get done today, I will create just one page for that. Try this one out. Try to unload the amount of information that we are presenting in each of the pages and see how it feels. The seventh mistake is to not spending enough time in learning formulas. If you're like me, we have grown up learning Excel formulas at high school, right? So when I started Notion and I realized that their formulas were different from Excel's, I was kind of bumped. So for the first days, even weeks of using the app, I didn't really want to invest time in learning those new formulas. But one day, I decided to take the leap and try to learn them. And oh my god, I felt so stupid because I didn't do it before because I started to see that formulas unlocked, I don't know, 70% of what Notion really can do. The best automations need formulas. So I now strongly believe that it's practically impossible to build an all around functioning system without the use of any formula. So if you were being a little bit lazy in learning formulas, I know it's a new kind of language, but please take the time to at least know the essential formulas. In fact, I made a video of the most important formulas that I believe Notion has and the ones that I use all the time. So you can check this video over here because trust me, a whole new work of possibilities is going to open up to you. So now please tell me in the comments if there is any mistake that you think we should warn everybody else that I didn't cover in this video so we can avoid more people from committing the same mistakes over and over. So that is it for this video, guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.